Good evening and welcome to your Friday edition of Live at Five. I'm Matt Harrelson and we're starting today's show off with John Goliath from Adrenaline Pro Wrestling who's here to promote a, uh, an event coming up tomorrow night, Saturday, at the Rescue Squad to help them raise some money. So, John, tell us all about the event. Well, the event, and usually we run like a, a yearly benefit for them because they're so kind and nice and generous. So, but this time it's different because a couple months ago they had their crash truck stolen and tools with it, all of it was burned up. So all of our proceeds will go to them in helping them regain tools or, you know, going towards a new crash truck. Right. And, you know, this isn't the first time you guys have done some events with, with the Rescue Squad. We've actually been uh, fortunate enough to uh, video some of those. Uh, but with that being said, what is it about the Rescue Squad? What's the connection there that uh, seems to always seem to bring back APW to that site? Honestly, I believe it's the best spot in town. People are good, good crowd. Yeah, it, the fans are decent. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, with that being said, give us the information. So if folks, uh, first of all, do they need to get tickets? And if they do, where can they get them? How much are they? All that good stuff. Um, well, they can purchase the tickets at the door. They're $6. Uh, children five and under get in free. That's the gist of it. All right. And, uh, I mean, is, is at the door the only place they can get them? And can you get them online? Or they just basically need to show up? For now, they just need to show up. All right. And what time is this kicking off? Uh, doors open at 6 o'clock, bell time is at 7.15. All right, and anybody that's been to an APD, uh, APW uh, event, there's always some great matches that go on, uh, a lot of fan favorites. So tell the folks out there who could they expect to see tomorrow night. Okay, tomorrow night we do have a grudge match between Wachi and Scrapyard Dog. Now, the story with that is Wachi turned on Scrapyard at the last show, causing him to lose his heavyweight championship. All right, anything else? We also have a ladder match for the Cruiserweight Championship. All right. Who doesn't love a good ladder match? <laughs> That's going to be a tough one. Yeah. All right, any other matches that uh, folks need to know about? Yeah. There's um, me and Cruz Biddle will be face facing Icons Unlimited. Now, these guys, they're brothers. They go, their names are Grizzly and Angel Angels. Now... They think they can go around beating up everybody, be all big and bad. Well, this Saturday, come check us out because me and Cruz Bitter are going to shut it down. All right. You heard it here first. So uh, if you want to come check out some great wrestling action and help out the Rescue Squad at the same time, head out to the Rescue Squad on Rockingham Road tomorrow night. Uh, always $6 for tickets. Children five and under get in free. John Goliath from APW. Really appreciate it. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with all of your news, weather, and sports right after this. Hometown heroes? Well, maybe. When it comes to backyard comfort and no pesky mosquitoes, call Brown Termite and Pest Control at 910-895-6410 or 910-276-8870. Their team of superheroes can take back control of your paradise. That's 910-895-6410 today. After five years at the Hamlet Depot, the Richmond County Chamber of Commerce is moving back to the county seat. Chamber President Emily Tucker said Thursday that she and her staff will be relocating to the former location on Rockingham Road across from City Hall and the Leaf Memorial Library. She said the contractor Southern Builders is moving pretty fast and they hope to be moved in by early November. The contractor started remodeling last month and have taken out several walls to reshape the floor plan. Tucker said the job was scheduled to take 60 to 90 days. The chamber moved to the depot around June of 2014, but Tucker said they have outgrown that office. The new old office will also feature new technology and an expanded training and conference center, including projectors with 9-foot screens, which were donated, and Wi-Fi. Scotland County artist Stuart Carmichael completed the mural out near the Hamlet Senior Center on Wednesday with a last-minute addition featuring the likenesses of Hamlet City Council member Joe Robson and his grandchildren, according to City Manager Jonathan Blanton. The mural is just a part of an overall beautification project around uh, Hamlet City Lake. At Tuesday's City Council meeting, Blanton requested approval for a master plan that will outline two projects at the Hamlet City Lake. 
The first project would improve the integrity of the existing dam at the request of the state. The second project would be the addition of a splash pad for recreation that would be located between the senior center and the old VFW. Dimensions for the splash pad would be roughly 150 feet by 70 and it would be constructed over the next 12 to 18 months. The plan would include the design and projected costs for both projects. The Wooden Company and Grimes Engineering are the companies that would work on the plan. An extension of the existing walking trail, more picnic areas, boardwalk extensions, and bathrooms are also possible items on the plan. If approved by the Council, the funding for these projects would be in the 2020-21 cycle for several grants that would cover much of the cost, according to Blanton. A Hamlet woman is facing several drug charges after police say they found weed and meth in her car. The Rockingham Police Department was conducting a checkpoint on East Washington Street on September 7th when a silver four-door Dodge pulled up around 9.15 p.m., according to an incident report. Officers reportedly found a rock substance and two grams of a green leafy substance, along with three clear containers, two grinders, two clear pins in a bowl used for smoking, a baggie and a clear container holding straws, razor blades, and other non-specified items. Officers arrested 24-year-old Amy Lou Cottingham of Wilson Avenue and charged her with one count each of possession of meth, possession of up to a half ounce of marijuana, and possession of drug paraphernalia. When we return, we've got your Live at 5 weather report. It's coming up right after the break, so stay tuned. Simply Chic Boutique in downtown Rockingham has a wide selection of designer clothing, purses, shoes, jewelry, home decor, and other accessories. Stop by our location at 302 East Washington Street to check out one of the finest stores in the Sand Hills region that features great deals on brand name clothing. That's Simply Chic Monogram Boutique in downtown Rockingham on the corner of East Washington and South Lawrence Street. At Richmond County Hospice, we strive to provide high quality care to our patients and their families. Whether it's the incredible hospitality at the Haven House or from the comfort of your own home, you can count on hospice to be there for you. We also offer monthly grief support groups and our chaplain will be there to hold your hand in prayer. Through our amazing staff and our volunteers, hospice has made difficult times easier for our community. Call the number on your screen if you feel that you or your loved one may benefit from our services. Richmond County Hospice, peace, comfort, dignity. Your Alignment 5 weather report is brought to you by RO Yellow. And going in for today, it's been a little bit of rain off and on, just a little bit of a drizzle kind of popping up here and there. Not a whole lot to ruin anyone's day, but uh, it is looking pretty solid tonight uh, into Friday evening here. Uh, 82 degrees around 6 o'clock, uh, clouds in the sky, but by uh, 9 o'clock tonight, we're expecting about 6, 76 with a clear sky. Of course, being Friday the 13th, we've got the full moon out as well. Uh, but fortunately, nothing bad has really happened, at least in terms of the weather. But moving into tomorrow's forecast, we are seeing more of that drizzle uh, across the Sand Hills region, uh, all the way up to uh, northern to northern end of Southern Pines, uh, except for down in Bennettsville. We're looking down there right now; it's not looking uh, nothing more than a little bit of clouds in the sky. But sorry, I'm in fact, it'll be a high 85, low of 71. Lumberton high 80, uh, high 87, low of 72. Uh, Rayford be a high 84, low of 70. Warrenburg high 86, low of 71. And then Warrenburg is going to, uh, excuse me, Warren, excuse me, Bennettsville is going to be a high 85, low of 71. Rockingham is going to be a high 85, low of 69. Then Ellerby about the same, high 85, low of 68. Southern Pines high 85, low of 68. And then across the PD River, Waysboro high 85, low of 69. Now taking a look at the seven day forecast again, high 85, low 69 for tomorrow. Sunday is going to be thunderstorms in the area, 40% chance of that in the day and the evening, high 88, low of 70. And then Monday, 30% chance, high 88, low of 67. Now moving over to Tuesday, partly cloudy skies in the area, uh, high 90, low of 67. And then Wednesday be a high 84, low of 60 with partly cloudy skies that day as well. And then Thursday, we're getting back just a little bit of pop-up shower, 30% chance of it in the day. None at night, high 82, low of 61. And then Friday, partly cloudy skies, high of 86, low of 63. That's going to do it for your Lot 5 weather report. When we return, we've got your RO Sports update. It's on the way right after this. 
At Richmond Community College, we can prepare you for a high-skill, high-paying career in a variety of fields. We are always developing new courses and programs in response to the communities we serve. We offer day, evening, and online courses, and you can now complete seven curricular programs entirely online, including our university transfer degree. At Richmond Community College, we believe in helping you prepare for a better life. Richmond Community College, local college, big impact. McNair Auto Sales is the place to buy your pre-owned car, truck, or van. To be the best, it takes big selection, friendly staff, and great pricing. We guarantee a no-hassle buying experience, and financing is available right on site. So come see us today. We're located at 1026 East Broad Avenue in Rockingham. And remember, with over 40 years of experience, you know McNair is the name you can trust. Willow Tree Antiques and Gifts is an occasional shop located at 122 South Hancock Street in Rockingham. We are open the first weekend of each month, Thursday through Saturday. We strive to offer a unique selection of vintage, antique, handmade, and new goods. If you are looking for something out of the ordinary, then we're the place for you. Willow Tree Antiques and Gifts is passionate about helping you make your home or office space unique. We would love to see you during our next occasional shop dates. A two-week hiatus between games for the Richmond JV football team saw Thursday's game end in something that hasn't happened since November 2015, a loss. After seeing its Week 2 game against Butler canceled by Hurricane Dorian, the JV Raiders hosted Cardinal Givens in a non-conference matchup. Despite having a 13-point lead at the start of the fourth quarter, Richmond will fall to the Crusaders by a final score of 21-20. to The loss snapped the JV Raiders' 30-game winning streak, which saw perfect seasons the past three years. Richmond was outscored 14-0 in the fourth quarter, and the late two scores, coupled with a pair of failed PAT attempts by, the Richmond, by Richmond earlier in the game, gave Cardinal Givens enough to earn the win. Richmond will head into its bye week and prepare for its SAC opener at Pernell Square on Thursday, September 26. Kickoff is set for 6.30 p.m. Early deficits the past couple of matches haven't seemed to deter the Richmond volleyball team as the Lady Raiders rallied to earn its second come-from-behind victory in as many nights. Back on the court for the third time this week, the Lady Raiders welcomed in the Lady Patriots of Lumberton for the first of two regular season SAC meetings. Entering the night, Richmond and Lumberton were in a four-way tie with Scotland and Jack Brett High Schools for second place in the standings. Richmond and assistant coach Melissa Dennis did their part to distance themselves from the pack, winning their third straight match and eighth game in their nine tries this season. The Lady Raiders defeated Lumberton 3-1, overcoming a 24-26 loss in the first set. The Lady Raiders will look to keep the momentum rolling in the right direction and have a chance to hit double digits and wins with three more matches next week. Richmond will host SAC opponent 71st on Tuesday and welcome in non-conference URA Char Charter Academy on Wednesday. There may not have been a lot of flashy plays during Thursday's non-conference soccer game, but Richmond head coach Chris Larson noted it was a quality soccer match between two really good teams. Playing for the third time in four nights to close out the week, the Raiders welcomed in Pine Forest. Despite plenty of scoring opportunities on both sides of the ball, neither team would find the back of a net, resulting in a 0-0 tie. Dating back to the 2014 season, Thursday's meeting was just the sixth time the two schools had met. It was the first draw between the Raiders and the Trojans. The two teams have traditionally kept the scoring low in their matchups. Richmond will get, the, will get three more chances next week to add to the win column. The Raiders will start at Hope County on Monday, host Lumberton, and travel to non-conference Terry Sanford on Thursday. All matches will begin at 7 p.m. And that's going to do it for another edition of Live at 5. Be sure to stay up to date on all of the latest in Richmond County by going to richmondobserver.com or by downloading the free RO app for your mobile devices. For the Live at 5 crew, I'm Russell Parker. Thanks for watching, good night, and have a great weekend, Richmond County.